a man to make people screen their faces. He was despised, and we took no account of him. And yet ours were the sufferings he bore, ours the sorrows he carried. But we, we thought of him as someone punished, struck by God and brought low. Yet he was passed through for our faults, crushed for our sins. On him lies a punishment that brings us peace, and through his wounds we are healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each taking his own way, and the Lord burdened him with the sins of all of us. Harshly dealt with, he bore it humbly. He never opened his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughterhouse, like a sheep that is dumb before its shearers, never opening its mouth. By force and by law he was taken. Would anyone plead his cause? Yes, he was torn away from the land of the living, for our faults struck down in death. They gave him a grave with the wicked, a tomb with the rich, though he had done no wrong, and there had been no perjury in his mouth. The Lord has been pleased to crush him with suffering. If he offers his life in atonement, he shall see his ears. He shall have a long life, and through him what the Lord wishes will be done. His soul's anguish over, he shall see the light and be content. By his sufferings shall my servant justify many taking their faults on himself. Hence I will grant whole hordes for his tribute. He shall divide the spoil with the mighty for surrendering himself to death and letting himself be taken for a sinner. While he was bearing the faults of many and praying all the time for sinners. The word of the Lord. Run far away from me. 
like a dead man forgotten in men's hearts like a thing thrown A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Since in Jesus, the Son of God, we have the Supreme High Priest who has gone through to the highest heaven, we must never let go of the faith that we have professed. For it is not as if we had a High Priest who was incapable of feeling our weaknesses with us. But we have one who has, who has been tempted in every way that we are, though he was without sin. Let us be confident then in approaching the throne of grace that we shall have mercy from him and find grace when we are in need of help. During his life on earth, he offered up prayer and entreaty, aloud and in silent tears, to the one who had the power to save him out of death. And he submitted so humbly that his prayer was heard. Although he was son, he learned to obey through suffering. But having been made perfect, he became for all who obey him the source of eternal salvation. The word of the Lord.
the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kedron Valley. There was a garden there, and he went into it with his disciples. Judas the traitor knew the place well, since Jesus had often met his disciples there, and he brought the cohort to this place together with a detachment of guards sent by the chief priests and the Pharisees, all with lanterns and torches and weapons. Knowing everything that was going to happen to him, Jesus then came forward and said, Who are you looking for? They answered, Jesus the Nazarene. He said, I am he. Now Judas the traitor was standing among them. When Jesus said, I am he, they moved back and fell to the ground. He asked them a second time, Who are you looking for? And they said, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus replied, I have told you that I am he. If I am the one you're looking for, let these others go. This was to fulfill the words he had spoken. Not one of those you have given me have I lost. Simon Peter, who carried a sword, drew it and wounded the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back in its scabbard. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? The cohort and its captain and the Jewish guards seized Jesus and bound him. They first took him to Annas, because Annas was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had suggested to the Jews, it is better that one man die for the people. Simon Peter, with another disciple, followed Jesus. This disciple, who was known to the high priest, went with Jesus into the high priest's palace, but Peter stayed outside the door. So the other disciple, the one known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who was keeping the door, and brought Peter in. The maid on duty at the door said to Peter, He answered, I am not. Now it was cold, and the servants and guards had lit a charcoal fire and were standing there warming themselves. So Peter stood there too, warming himself with the others. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly for all the world to hear. I have always taught in the synagogue and in the temple where all the Jews meet together. I have said nothing in secret, but why ask me? Ask my hearers what I taught. They know what I said. At these words, one of the guards standing by gave Jesus a slap in the face, saying, Is that the way to answer the high priest? Jesus replied, If there is something wrong in what I said, point it out. But if there is no offense in it, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him, still bound, to Caiaphas, the high priest. As Simon Peter stood there, warming himself, someone said to him, Aren't you another of his disciples? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relation of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and at once a cock crew. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was now morning. They did not go into the praetorium themselves, or they would be defiled and unable to eat the Passover. So Pilate came outside and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They replied, If he were not a criminal, we should not be handing him over to you. Pilate said, Take him yourself and try him by your own law. The Jews answered, We are not allowed to put a man to death. This was to fulfill the words Jesus had spoken, indicating the way he was going to die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium 
and called Jesus to him and asked, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, Do you ask this of your own accord, or have others spoken to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? It is your own people and the chief priests who have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus replied, Mine is not a kingdom of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my men would have fought to prevent me being surrendered to the Jews. But my kingdom is not of this kind. Pilate said, So you are king then? Jesus answered, It is you who say it. Yes, I am a king. I was born for this. I came into the world for this, to bear witness to the truth, and all who are on the side of truth listen to my voice. Pilate said, Truth? What is that? And with that he went out again to the Jews and said, I find no case against him, but according to a custom of yours, I should release one prisoner, prisoner at the Passover. Would you like me then to release the king of the Jews? At this they shouted, Not this man, but Barabbas. Barabbas was a brigand. Pilate then had Jesus taken away and scourged. And after this, the soldiers twisted some thorns into a crown and put it on his head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they slapped him in the face. Pilate came outside again and said to them, Look, I'm going to bring him out to you and let you see that I find no kiss. Jesus then came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said, Here is the man. When they saw him, the chief priests and the guards shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said, Take him yourself and crucify him. I can find no case against him. The Jews replied, We have a law, and according to the law, he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard them say this, his fears increased. Re-entering the praetorium, he said to Jesus, Where do you come from? But Jesus made no answer. Pilate then said to him, Are you refusing to speak to me? Surely you know I have power to release you, and I have power to crucify you. Jesus replied, You would have no power over me if it had not been given you from above. That is why the one who handed me over to you has the greater guilt. From that moment, Pilate was anxious to set him free, but the Jews shouted, If you set him free, you are no friend of Caesar's. Anyone who makes himself king is defying Caesar. Hearing these words, Pilate had Jesus brought out and seated himself on the chair of judgment at a place called the pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was Passover preparation day, about the sixth hour. Pilate said to the Jews, Here is your king, they said. Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said, Do you want me to crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king except Caesar. So in the end, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. Then they took charge of Jesus, and carrying his own cross, he went out of the city to the place of the skull, or as it was called in Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him with two others, one on either side with Jesus in the middle. Pilate wrote out a notice and had it fixed to the cross. It ran, Jesus the Nazarene, King of the Jews. This notice was read by many of the Jews because the place where Jesus was crucified was not far from the city, and the writing was in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the Jewish chief priests said to Pilate, You should not write king of the Jews, but this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had finished crucifying Jesus, they took his clothing and divided it into four shares, one for each soldier. 
His undergarment was seamless, woven in one piece from neck to hem. So they said to one another, Instead of tearing it, let us throw dice to decide who is to have it. In this way, the words of scripture will fulfilled. They shared out my clothing among them. They cast lots for my garments. This is exactly what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. Seeing his mother and the disciple he loved standing near her, Jesus said to him, Woman, his, this is your son. Then to the disciple he said, This is your mother. And from that moment, the disciple made a place for her in his home. After this, Jesus knew that everything had now been completed. And to fulfill the scripture perfectly, he said, I am thirsty. A jar full of vinegar stood there. So putting a sponge soaked in vinegar on a hyssop stick, they held it up to his mouth. After Jesus had taken the vinegar, he said, It is accomplished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. It was preparation day, and to prevent the bodies remaining on the cross during the Sabbath, since that Sabbath was a special day of solemnity, the Jews asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken away. Consequently, the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with him, and then of the other. When they came to Jesus, they found that he was already dead, and so, Instead of breaking his legs, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a lance, and immediately there came out blood and water. This is the evidence of one who saw it, trustworthy evidence, and he knows he speaks the truth. And he gives it so that you may believe as well. Because all this happened to fulfill the words of Scripture. Not one bone of his will be broken. And again, in another place, scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because he was afraid of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him remove the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so they came and took it away. Nicodemus came as well the same one who had first come to Jesus at night. And he brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in a linen cloth, following the Jewish burial custom. At the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. Since it was a Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was near at hand, they laid Jesus there. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ.
So we continue from where we left off last evening. And today we go deeper into the mystery of the cross. We have just prayed the passion of Christ according to John with all its gruesome details leading up to his resurrection, his crucifixion rather. You know, the crucifixion was a very gruesome, painful torture. I don't know when last you looked at a cross, a crucifix, and stared at it, and saw the body of Jesus on there. I don't know if you ever thought of the humiliation that he must have gone through. He, going through the streets of Jerusalem with a beam on his shoulders, being mocked, being spat upon, falling numerous times, meeting his mother, going as was done this morning, recognizing that Veronica wiped his face, being helped by Simon. But all through this, the pain, the word we use is excruciating, excruci, from the cross, the worst kind of pain that you, any of us could ever imagine. And then, of course, being stripped naked. Who would ever be want, want to be stripped naked in the middle of the city? What humiliation. To say nothing of the psychological torment that he must have gone through, knowing who he was, innocent, and going through all of that suffering. And then, hanging on the cross, the labored breathing, he died of asphyxiation, and the body being left there for several days, well, in his case, not for too long, but normally left there for days at the mercy of the vultures, and all passing by would see it. And today, dear friends, we gather once again to look at the cross and to meditate on the mystery of the cross. What does that cross mean for you and for me? In a sense, you could say that it's a strange thing having people ourselves who are of sound mind and body coming together on a hot afternoon at 3 o'clock to look at a cross, to look at someone dying on the cross, to look at this horrible thing. And yet that's what we do. And if the cross were not shielded today, I would ask you to have another look at it. Look at it with all your eyes, all your eyes, and all your hearts, and all your minds, as I invited you to last night to go deeper into this mystery of rising and dying with all our senses. All our senses, not only our minds and intellects, but with our hands and our feet, and our ears and our noses and our mouths, everything, all the senses that we have, to feel what it is this means to us. And if we did look at the cross, my dear friends, we would once again relive what we, most of us, did this morning, as I'm sure happened in most of our parishes today, where we began early in the morning to walk through the streets of our city, going up to the Calvary, praying, praying the stations of the cross, as we say going again in that meditation of recognizing what he did for you and for me. How he was condemned, brutally beaten, denied, betrayed, and then ultimately dying a criminal's death on the cross. And if you were to look at the cross, my dear friends, I would ask you, what do you see? As you look at the cross, what do you see? And what do you feel? I remember many years ago when I was dean of the cathedral, on two occasions we dramatized the passion. 
And on the second dramatization, the, the person who played the person of Jesus is now a Roman Catholic priest. You know him very well. And as you dramatize the passion, the noise, the shouting, people wept. I'm sure some of you remember it. Maybe some of you had taken part in it. And there it came alive. They were actually dragging my God as a common criminal to die on a cross. How can this be? And we wept. Because we went through with him the mocking and the beating and the cursing, the jeering. When you look at the cross, what do you see? The horror, the horror of a man being torn apart for no reason at all, an innocent man, a man who is God. What do you see? The pain? As he spoke these last words, some of which we heard today, woman, this is your son. Son, this is your mother. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. I thirst into your hands. I commend my spirit. Did you feel the rejection? Did you feel the institutional injustice, the humiliation? But in all that, my dear friends, as he is on the cross, what comes to our mind is the serpent in the desert. You will remember in the book of Numbers when the people, because they were so disobedient, were being attacked by these fiery serpents. And when they asked pardon, they went to Moses, and, and God said to Moses, Make a bronze serpent and put it on a standard. And everyone who has been bitten by it, when they look at that serpent, they will be healed. And Jesus says, as Moses lifted up the serpent, the Son of Man must be lifted up. And when I am lifted up, I will draw all people to myself. Dear friends, look at him. Look at him again. Because what he's saying there is, as I am lifted up, and I, as you look at me, I will bring you healing. Your fears, your anxieties, your bad memories, your griefs, look at them. And he's saying, I'm healing them even now. Yes, you see the horror, the pain, the rejection, the death, in short, everything that frightens us. It's a gruesome scene. And yet we dare to look at it because we know that that's not the end. But no more than that, that through all that pain, we were healed. By his stripes, we have been healed. And so we understand what Paul says in Philippians. Though he was in the form of God, Jesus did not deem equality with God something to be grasped at, but rather he emptied himself and took the form of a slave. And being as all men are, he became obedient, accepting death on a cross. Accepting death on the cross. He, God, came all the way down to us so that we would have hope, know that whatever we're going through, he's been through that already. And he's there. And so we speak words like liberation. We have been freed. We speak words like salvation. He has saved us. We speak words like redemption. We have been redeemed. Go deeper into the mystery of the cross. That every time we see the cross, all of that should happen to us. In a few moments, we'll be invited to venerate the cross. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Come, let us worship. Come, let us experience our own salvation. Because he who is God became human, a human being and offered himself on the cross so that you, so that I could live. Were you there? Were you there when he was condemned? 
Were you there when they laid the cross on him? Were you there when he fell beneath the cross? Were you there when Mary met her son? Were you there when Simon helped the Lord? Were you there when the woman wiped his face? Were you there when Jesus fell again? Were you there when the women wept for him? Were you there when Jesus fell again? When they stripped him of his clothes? When they nailed him to the tree? When he breathed his last? Were you there to grieve with the mother as she held her son? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble. Tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Thank you, Lord, for dying for me. Thank you, Lord, for redeeming me on the cross. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for bearing my sins so that I can live with you forever. Thank you, Lord. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to grant her, and to unite her throughout the whole world, and grant that leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God, the Father Almighty. Hear us, Lord, hear us. Hear us, Lord, hear us. Almighty, ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations. Watch over the works of your mercy, that your church, spread throughout all the world, may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name. Through Christ our Lord. 
Let us pray also for our most holy father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him for the order of bishops, may keep him safe and not harm for the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God. ever living God by whose decree all things are founded look with favor on our prayers and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us that under him the Christian people governed by you their maker may grow in merit by reason of their faith through Christ our Lord Amen. And let us pray for our apostolic administrator, Gabriel, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Hear us, Lord, hear us. Hear Almighty ever-living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace all may serve you faithfully. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for catechumens that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy that having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Hear us, Lord, hear us. Hear us, Lord, hear us. Almighty, ever-living God, who make your church ever fruitful with new offspring, increase the faith an understanding of catechumens that reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ that our God and Lord may be pleased as they leave the truth to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Hear us, Lord, hear Almighty ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated 
may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that he may grant them to advance in the love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Hear us, Lord, hear us. Hear us, Lord, hear us. Almighty, ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church, that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Hear us, Lord, hear us. Hear us, Lord, hear us. Almighty, ever-living God, Grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart they may find the truth and that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right in sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Hear us, Lord, hear us. Hear us, Lord, hear us. Almighty, ever-living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you come to rest, Grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you, and so in gladness confess you, the one true God and Father of our human race. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those in public office that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will for the true peace and freedom of all. Hear us, Lord, hear us. Hear us, Lord, hear us. Almighty, ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart 
and the rights of peoples. Look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, and freedom of religion may through your gift be made secure. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God, the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all evil errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil. May the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice, because in their hour of need your mercy was at hand. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pause for a moment to remember Haiti, to remember Gaza, to remember Sudan and Ukraine and all the other parts of the world where there is civil unrest or political strife. We ask the Lord to deliver our world from all that makes for war and division and all that contributes to suffering of every kind. Hear us, Lord, hear us. Hear us, Lord. Father God, it is in your world that we live. We acknowledge that it is you who run things in our world and in our nation. We ask you, please, that your hand be powerful over the world and over this place. Let your face light up the world and give hope to all who are hopeless. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your The ushers will now come to receive your offering. We thank you for your generosity.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
sent from the Father. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve in us the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever and ever.